So as you may have seen, Star Eater got a nerf. Simultaneously though, it also got a buff, which is kind of interesting. The question today is what exactly is the best damage dealing super? And I'm really gonna narrow it down to four setups. Celestial Nighthawk for bottom tree gunslinger, our Yeet Exotic for our Titans, Geomax for our Warlocks, and of course the new exotic Star Eater. Guys, we're gonna be breaking down damage numbers today because I was also curious about which one of these are the best. But first, let's just go ahead and highlight Star Eater real quick. As it comes with the exotic perk, Feast of Light. You gain additional super energy from orbs of power you pick up. While your super energy is full, picking up an orb of power overcharges your super, causing you to gain a burst of healing when you cast and a bonus to your super damage. And at maximum overcharge, you gain an overshield in your super. Now, previously, you only had to pick up four orbs in order to get four stacks of feats. But stated in yesterday's patch, Bungie fixed an issue where Star Eater Scales was erroneously applying its damage bonus to weapons and grenades instead of only supers as intended. Remember previously, Top Tree Tether, it would actually increase your weapon damage. There was a reason why Star Eater Scales was disabled for day one raids. It was intended to boost super damage and now it's been fixed to only applying that buff to super damage. They also increased the maximum number of stacks required for the full damage bonus from four stacks to now eight stacks. That's actually worded poorly. What it should state is increase the maximum number of orbs required to reach four stacks of feasts. Previously was four orbs, now eight orbs. Regardless, sounds like a pretty hefty nerf, but there is one good thing that was added to this. Turns out when testing damage numbers here, pre 3.2.0.2, even though Bungie is requiring the setup to be more difficult, Star Eater is actually doing more damage for your supers, approximately 18 to 19% more damage. We actually checked this at Shurachi, and these are our damage numbers from what we were doing previously to what we are doing now and if you notice that celestial nighthawk is still the same so everything here at cali is still the same so the good thing is yes star eater did get a nerf it no longer procs for weapons and it's also got a more difficult setup requiring you to collect eight orbs instead of four to get the max stacks but you get 18 to 19 percent more damage and when we actually like draw it down here star eater for bottom tree tether gunslinger and gunslinger would knock them down far outperforms all of our other supers in total damage look how much more damage it's doing than Celestial. Compared to Yeet as well as Geo, Bottom Tree Tether is doing 99% more total damage than both of those supers. And that's with the adjusted crit multiplier. And again, I know somebody's going to bring it up. The 99% more damage that it does over Yeet and Geo Mag Warlocks is after I actually adjusted our damage here from a two-time crit multiplier to 1.5. I know Cali has a two-point time multiplier. We dropped it to 1.5. We adjusted the numbers regardless. Overall, in total damage, damage star eater is second to none it is by far the most damage amongst all supers in the game unless like another super snuck by us watch shade binder be like the best dps super and i just didn't know about it now before we get into like dps values i do want to bring up something because somebody came into the comment section and our chat yesterday and stated that it's actually going to be more than eight orbs it's like three masterwork orbs for one feast two super orbs for one feast that's incorrect all the orbs in the eyes of feasts and star eater scales is is all created the same two orbs for one stack of feasts so i just kind of wanted to get that one out of the way before we went any further because there seemed to be some misinformation circulating on that front and we're going to talk about star eaters in a little more depth here in just a second but let's talk about damage like dps of these supers because i just went over the fact that star eater is far superior in total damage but dps well things start to change a little bit here because when you take in supers like Gunslinger, Bottom Tree Gunslinger, where you have to land three shots, Bottom Tree Tether, where you have to land a number of tethers, Geo Warlock, which really sticks you in that animation for a very, very long time. This is where you start to see things like the Yeet Exotic for Titans and Celestial match and outpace other supers in terms of damage per second. And that's simply because take Geo Warlocks, for instance, that entire animation takes 7.7 .7 seconds or nearly 7.7 .7 seconds from start to finish. It's a very long animation and it does pretty much the same amount of damage as yeet now granted you could do it from afar we 
Whereas Falling Star, you're pretty much right there underneath your enemy when you do that. On top of that, you got to get back to wherever it is you were doing damage from. But in terms of immediate damage, you see where Celestial and Yeet both sit. It's very impressive. But look at Star Eater Bottom Tree Tether. The total damage was fantastic. But notice here, its DPS drops to 55,734. Now, granted, that's much better than Geo's at nearly 25,000. But landing a number of tethers could be very difficult depending on what boss you're attacking. Some of them got big crit spots, some of them don't. And yes, hitting crits with bottom tree tether does make a difference. You want to hit crits, guys. But this DPS value is not good. And even when we look at Star Raider Gunslinger at times four, and again, this is all at times four here, Gunslinger would knock him down, which is a very difficult thing to set up leading into your super, especially for like a damage phase. Look at that. Star Raider Gunslinger would knock him down. Feast times four pretty much matches the same DPS value as Celestial. They're almost identical here. So thank God Bungie came in here and gave us this 18 to 19 percent buff because dps wise it would have been substantially lower than things like falling star and celestial and in small damage phases that can make a difference and of course we cannot overlook the ease of use landing tethers on atheon unless you're like rocking divinity is a difficult thing to do and yes you can rock divinity but again you're taking someone out of that damage phase to rock that divinity i think overall the total damage from star eater is impressive and depending on the scenario the boss the encounter you can weigh the pros and cons of choosing star eater over some of these other exotics and super combinations and simultaneously also depends on ammo economy like there are times that you blow your entire ammo load and all you have left is your super so in that scenario yeah having a super that can do good total damage over an extended period of damage phases works out here. Now, circling back to Star Eater, was this nerf justified? I think for the weapon damage, yes, because that was never intended. Bungie stated that that was actually an error. So I, I get that. I really think that increasing the maximum number of stacks from four orbs to eight orbs really counters what you're trying to do with this exotic. Like you're trying to get your super as fast as you can. And again, it states it right there that you gain additional super energy from orbs of power that you pick up and it's a noticeable difference the problem is if you're looking to get those max stacks of feasts to get that big bump in damage all that time that you saved collecting orbs and getting more super energy from those orbs leading up to your super really gets wiped away because you're sitting there trying to collect eight more orbs to some extent i do wish that bungie had a different ratio here where all orbs weren't created equal where masterwork orbs did require two to one stack but super orbs from your teammates was a one to one now, granted, that is, of course, if you want to utilize Star Eater scales with four stacks of feats. You don't have to. As one stack provides 22.5% more damage, two stack provides 45% more damage, three at 67.5, and of course, four at that whopping 90%. I think the majority of us, though, would like to utilize feats times four. I mean, who wouldn't want 90% more damage for your super? I just find the setup to be annoying. And to some extent, I've seen people now talk about using Star Eater scales as only a mean to get their super back and then swap to celestial nighthawk as celestial nighthawk kills grant you 33 percent of your super back upon kill and then swap right back to star to regen your super back quicker yes that, that's a play you can do that but that defeats the whole purpose here considering that dps wise like i know total damage star eater does outpace all of these other exotics but dps wise when it's all said and done star eater is just barely matching that of exotics like celestial with much much less ease of use. So guys, those are my thoughts on Star Eater. I think overall, I like the increase that they gave to super damage. I think if you have a long enough damage phase, Star Eater is fantastic if you've got the time to set it up, if you've got the time to collect eight orbs in your super. But it's ease of use. It's ease of use is difficult. And I actually think some hunters will steer away from this exotic despite it having much better total damage. Ease of use really does matter, especially in things like Grandmaster Nightfalls. Hence why you see so many of our nightfall gods where we use things like nova bombs and geomag warlocks obviously geomax is not breaking the bank in terms of dps but its ease of use and the ability to cast it and stay relatively safe is its selling points personally i wish bungie would reverse or re-ratio the orb requirements here for star eater make it only four orbs bungie or in the least 
four orbs from a super and maybe eight orbs from masterwork weapons so guys that is our review for these exotics as well as their damages how they're performing try it out for yourselves play around with it i'm sure there'll be some easier way to generate orbs it may even bring out certain exotics like alpha loopy for our titans so they can create more orbs for those star eater scale hunters and we're going to try it out more in like master nightfalls as well as grandmaster nightfalls who knows we may be able to make star eater scales actually work and depending on what we're synergizing there maybe capturing that feast times four might be a little more manageable but at the same time bungee i really wish you wouldn't have increased the ore requirement fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right <laughs>